Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov commented on a Wall Street Journal report that Iran had supplied Russia with short-range missiles on Monday, saying that the Kremlin had seen the report but that this kind of information is not always true. Iran is our important partner. We are developing our trade and economic relations, Peskov said, adding, we are developing our cooperation and dialogue in all possible areas, including the most sensitive ones, and will continue to do so in the interests of the peoples of our two countries. Asked about German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's peace plan for Ukraine, as reported by Italian media, Peskov said that Russia wouldn't brush off any plans in advance, but that the details of the plan were unclear. According to intelligence information of the British Ministry of Defence, the new academic year in the aggressor country was marked by the introduction of a new model of military training of students in schools. The new academic year in Russia started with the implementation of a new model of military training for school children aimed at readiness to defend the state. It is noted that a number of new measures for military training of school children are part of the program called Fundamentals of Security and Defense of the Fatherland, designed for teenagers aged 15 to 16. In the intelligence of the British Ministry of Defense, it is emphasized that the training course within the framework of military training consists of 11 modules calculated from 68 training hours. Among the topics of this course are training in combined military combat, mastering small arms, ideological formation of values based on propaganda Kremlin narratives, acquisition of knowledge and skills that ensure readiness to fulfill the constitutional duty to protect the state. British intelligence predicts that the implementation of this program will make Russian society even more militarized. The new youth strategy approved by the government in August 2024 is aimed at increasing the prestige of military service, fostering patriotism and civic responsibility, but primarily at preparing pre-conscription teenagers mentally and physically for military service. In addition, the number of summer camps for children participating in various military activities is increasing. This strategy notes that over the past 30 years, the values of the younger generation have shifted from collectivism to individualism and from statism to cosmopolitanism. It is argued that the ideological expansionism of Russia's geopolitical competitors has led to the weakening of traditional values and the growth of individualism. The new strategy is aimed at turning this process back, while the militarization of youth is an integral part of this process, explains British intelligence. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko summarized the first month of Ukraine's operation in Russia's Kursk region. On his Telegram channel, Alexander Kovalenko reported that Ukrainian forces have achieved significant progress by capturing approximately 1,300 kilometers squared of territory in Russia's Kursk region. This advance has established a buffer zone along the border with Ukraine's Sumy region. According to Kovalenko, Ukrainian forces have successfully compelled the Russian military to redeploy resources and troops from other combat zones in Ukraine to the Kursk region. He noted that as of early August, the Russian troop presence in Kursk was around 10,000 personnel, but it has since grown to 35,000. Russian units involved, the 155th Guards Naval Infantry Brigade, the 56th Guards Air Assault Regiment, the 810th Guards Naval Infantry Brigade, the 11th Guards Air Assault Brigade, the 144th Guards Motor Rifle Division, the 71st Motor Rifle Regiment, 
the 38th Separate Guards Motor Rifle Brigade, the 64th Separate Guards Motor Rifle Brigade, the 200th Separate Motor Rifle Brigade are engaged, the Piatnachka Brigade. Kovalenko mentioned that there are rumors of the presence of Akhmat forces, but Ukrainian troops have yet to encounter them. Recently, President Volodymyr Zelensky disclosed the number of Russian losses in the Kursk region, stating that 6,000 Russian soldiers have been killed or wounded. According to the military expert, with the current Russian force size at 35,000, the total Russian troop commitment in the Kursk region over the past month amounts to approximately 41,000. Despite the reinforcements, Russian troops are struggling to stabilize the situation and continue to lose territory. Kovalenko suggested that this might force Russia to deploy additional forces, potentially increasing their presence in the Kursk region to at least 50,000. Kovalenko added that Ukrainian forces have disrupted Russian logistics by cutting the crucial rail link through Sudza and targeting key roadways, including the E-38 highway from Kursk to Rilsk. They have also seized the largest gas distribution station in Sudza, a significant strategic asset. Initially, Russian representatives declared an end to negotiations with Ukraine, including those concerning prisoner exchanges. However, Kovalenko reported that on August the 24th, a prisoner exchange took place, with 115 prisoners from each side being exchanged. Kovalenko concluded that the Kursk operation has inflicted a level of humiliation on Russia not seen since World War II, emphasizing the significant impact on Russia's reputation and the ongoing difficulties in addressing and countering the Ukrainian advances.